guys, it's Susie, and today my video is not mainly about canvas, but there's a titch of canvas, as some of my southern friends say. So we're going to make a really fun activity today that I think you're going to love. It's a free alternative to Goose Chase, um, because that can be a really pricey app, so it doesn't do exactly what it'll do, but I am nerdy and I had so much fun. Uh, I was inspired by a youth group scavenger hunt. So anyway, we're going to talk about the Wonder Hunt Cloud Collector and how you can use it to create a scavenger hunt. Stay tuned. Okay, so there is a new feature in OneDrive that you're going to love. It is not on every account, so if you find that it's disabled for your security features on your district or on your school, then just talk to your administrator and see if they can enable it this for you. I do not do back-end stuff, so I have no idea what to tell them. <laughs> just, I guess they can mess with the security features till they have it, because one of my accounts has it, one doesn't. But what you're going to do is you're going to create the folder structure to receive images for the scavenger hunt. So I'm going to go ahead and click New, Folder, and I'm just going to call it something fancy here, Scavenger Hunt. You can even do what I like to do, which is put an emoji on it. So remember Windows period will open your emoji picker, and it's fall time. So I'm going to put that there. And then after I make that folder, I'm going to put uh, subfolders inside it to receive each clue so they're not all jammed up together. So I'm going to say new folder. And I'm just going to, again, get really fancy. Clue one. Clue two. And you can call these whatever if you need to describe them in some way. I just went on a youth group scavenger hunt last night. And uh, so ours might have been like find a statue or go dip your toes in the sand or whatever it was. But you can continue going. And then after you create those folders, you will notice that you can put a check mark in front of them. And if this feature is enabled by your district or by your school, you will see request files. I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And I'm gonna enter a name for the request. And I'm gonna say just, I'm gonna copy the same name, clue one. And I believe, and we'll see in a minute, but I believe it appends that information to each person's entry. So I'm going to copy this link, but I'm going to show you in a minute that we're going to turn that link into a scavenger, excuse me, into a QR code, so stay tuned for that. I know we're all familiar with what QR codes are because we've all had to scan them for menus for like, you know, what seems like eternity now. But I want to show you some tricks for creating them that are quick. If you're in the Chrome browser, which I am right now, you will see that you can add an extension for, um, it's just called the QR code extension. Just for a reminder how you do that, if you will just search Chrome Web Store, you can go and get any extension you want. So I've installed the extension called, again, the QR code extension. And by default, what's cool about this is it creates a, um, a QR code for whatever the current address is. So you can click that, but here's my hack. I don't want a link to Bing. So I'm going to go to edit this QR code. And then very quickly, I can paste in that code from my, I'm going to call it the file collector. And this gives me something I can save or snip or whatever it is I want to do with it. The second way that I like to um, make QR codes, if I'm, not, if I'm on Edge or a different browser, is I can just go to qrstuff.com. I'm going to leave it on website URL. I'm going to paste the link. I'll see my code change over here, which I can download. As soon as I try to download it, it'll try to make me pay, but I don't have to pay. I can just say no thanks here. And then say that is something you actually want to remember. So clue one or something um, will be an important thing for you to do. So you can create your QR codes, and we'll talk about what to do with them in a minute. You're going to create one for each folder. So if I'm in my subfolders, I've got one for clue two, and I'm going to keep on making a file request for each different folder. Okay? So I'm on my phone scanning the code, and when I scan it, it takes me to a short link, and then you'll see where it allows the student to upload a, a file of their choice. It wasn't fitting very well on my screen, but anyway, they select a file. They can take a picture from their computer or from their phone. So imagine kids are running around doing some kind of scavenger hunt. This would be great virtually or in person or whatever. I'm just uploading a selfie so that I don't violate anyone's privacy with me. And they get to put their name on it. And then I'll show you on the next slide what it looks like for the teacher. So they just put their name in. They upload it. And then they'll get this picture over on the right that just says your upload was successful. So I think I stop it after it uploads, like, I don't know, 40% or something. But then I um, let you know on the right-hand side again that it'll give you that message that your upload was successful. So I'm going to wait for this to finish. Here it comes. Here it comes. In a minute, I think I got it to, like, 48. But if I stop talking, it'll just pop with something. 
So I'm going to take a sip of my English breakfast tea. While that is doing its thing, I think I got tired of waiting at some point. Tell me if you guys are doing well. Well, so I also didn't wear makeup today. Surprise. Working in a coffee shop right now. Surprise. I promised you a little touch of Canvas, and so here's how I would connect this to Canvas. I would go into a module, of course, but I'm not starting with this, this is just a particular course. And to share your QR codes with your students, I would just go to page. So I'm going to go to this page, I'm going to go to this QR code, I'm going to go to this whatever you want, add your emoji of choice, there's my pumpkin waiting for me. And then I would just insert a table, so I'm going to go to the table. I, you know, I like long and skinny because it looks good, fits on the phone. And then just start uploading those pictures there. So if you copy and paste images into Canvas, they don't always look beautiful. So I'm going to upload the image, go on, submit it, and just continue adding those to the table and, you know, label it however you want. But that way, your students can come here to scan the codes with their phones or with their iPads or their devices of choice. And um, they'll be able to play this game along with you. Guys, I hope you love this idea. I thought it was kind of out of rocks. I'm excited to share it with several people. So feel free to share the video with your friends. Take care. Hey guys, I put my heart into these videos, so I hope you loved it. I hope you've loved all of them, but if you haven't, then make sure you go back and watch the previous videos. I'm making playlists for you all the time. So if you're somebody who wants time savers, there's a playlist for that. If you want to gamify, playlist for that. And all of my themes of my blog. So did you like it? Go ahead and click the thumb below. If you really liked it, I'd love if you shared it on your favorite social media channel. I'm at Suzy Lolly on Twitter. And then finally, my very favorite is if you subscribe. Subscribe to YouTube and subscribe on the blog. Take care.